good. Um, they say the story about this uh, Jewish guy who ends up uh, at a doctor. He has gout. And he's in the waiting room, and there's another Gentile there. And the Gentile goes into the doctor, and the doctor starts lifting his leg, and the guy's screaming, ow, 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 on and on and on. Then he comes out, and the Jew goes in, and the doctor checks him, checks his leg, everything, and the Jew doesn't scream. Then they're sitting back out in the room, waiting, you know, to get their prescriptions. And the Gentile turns to the Jew, and he says, I don't understand. How did he not scream? That's so painful. The doctor was touching his leg that had gout. And the Jew says, are you crazy? Do you think I showed him my leg that has gout so it should hurt and I should scream? I showed him the other leg. So he, there was no problem. Everything was fine. Anyway, I say this. This historical portion I told you speaks about Tsaras. It speaks about leprosy, which was the white patch that a person got. It was a symptom of something spiritual that was deeper, that was troubling, that he needed to quarantine for a week and be able to become a better human being and have some introspection to what was wrong with him. But you know, all the verses in the Torah, everything is there for a reason. And the verse of, that says it to us says, Adam, a person that has a patch of, a white patch and ends up a leprosy. And the rabbi asks, why is the word that the Torah uses for a man called Adam here? I don't know if you know, but usually when the Torah wants to call a person, it says Ish, a man, or Isha, a woman. There's four names. There could be Geber, Enosh, Ish, or Adam. Why does he use Adam to describe the person here? And Rabbi Shlomo Gansfried, who wrote the Kitzah uh, Shulchan Aruch, the short code of Jewish law, says something very interesting. He says, you know, every word in Hebrew Ish, which means man, has the plural, which means anashim. Isha has the plural, which means nashim. Tapuach, which is an apple, has the plural, which means tapuchim. Now let me ask you a question. What's the plural for Adam? Adamim? Anyone speak Hebrew here? What's the plural for Adam? There is none. There's only the singular. There is no way you could... Do a plural for Adam as you do for every other word. And he says that's why the Torah uses the word Adam. And let me explain it to you with a story. The story is, you see I'm in the house and the kids are crying. So you're getting the whole uh, background here. But the story is at the Bayless trial. 1912, no, 1911, April, no, March 12th, 1911, there was this young 13-year-old Ukrainian boy who was on the way home from school, and he disappeared. A month later in April, they found his mutilated body in a cave, in a cave, in, near some brick factory. And in July, they arrested a guy, Menachem Mendel Bayless, who happened to be a superintendent in the brick factory and was accused of murdering this young child to use his blood in the matzah for baking for Passover. Menachem Mendel Bayless grew up in a Hasidic family, but he was not religious at the time, and the ground shook under all the Jews living in Ukraine and all over Russia. Here they were living in comfort, thinking they were an integral part of society, and yes, someone could come up with such a fabrication, but it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be recognized in real courts. And here they were, later on in 19... 42, 45, we realized that let's not kid ourselves. No matter who and where, they'll always accuse the Jews. But back then, they didn't realize that or think that. And what happened was, it became a major campaign all over the world. And anti-Semites from all over, from all over, tried to accuse the whole Jewish community of using Christians' blood 
in the matzah for Pesach. Now, ironically, we always know how ridiculous that is. You ever saw a Jewish mother cook eggs? We always open the eggs and we check it to make sure there's not even a blood spot. And if there's a blood spot, we throw the eggs out. Here, the entire Jewish community was being accused because a kid was found mutilated that we were killing Christians. And it became a terrible campaign against the Jewish community. In fact, the kid's body had 13 stab wounds and they tried to connect it to the Jewish connection of 13. It turns out later they found out it was 14, but who cared, right? They handpicked 12 jurists who were all handpicked because of their love, so to speak, for the Jewish people. Mendel Bayless was in prison for two years waiting trial and it was just horrendous what was going on. The Jewish community was in shock, but the Jewish community realized they hired this famous, um, his name was Oscar um, Grusenberg, I think. Asher was his Hebrew name. He went to the law school in um, Yekaterinoslav, which was today St. Petersburg, and he was one of the best lawyers, and they hired him to lead the case to protect Menachem Mendel Bayless. Now they realized they would need scholars involved because they would use the Torah against us to say that we use the blood of the Christians for our matzah. So they made a team of rabbis. Heading the team was Rabbi Maza, the great rabbi of Moscow at that point, who was a, a, a brilliant genius and who collaborated a whole team together. The Lubavitcher Rebbe, the fifth Lubavitcher Rebbe then in 1912, he sent Rebbe Levi Yitzchak Schneerson, the Rebbe's father, who was the rabbi of Yekaterinoslav, to be on the team representing him, and so on and so forth. So the trial was about to open, and they knew they would need to be prolific in the Torah. Now the trial opened, and the one of the first things they lobbed at the Jewish people was a quote from Rav Shimon Bar Yochai, which is in the Talmud, which says, Atem Kruyim Adam, the Ein Umos Ha'olam Kruyim Adam. You are called Adam, the Jewish people, and the people of the world are not called Adam, all the other people. And they wanted to use this as proof that to Jews, anyone who's not Jewish, is not a human being. How could that be? The Torah is the one that says in Genesis, that every human being is created in the image of God. So how could you say that about the Jews? But they wanted to bring a proof from this Talmud quote against the Jewish people. Rabbi Shapiro, the famous Lubliner rabbi who created the Dafyomi later, wrote a powerful answer that he asked the Jewish people, that he asked Rabbi Maza and the, the lawyers to use to explain it. He says, you know why the Torah says, and Rabbi Shimon Bayechai says, Atem Kruyim Adam, you are called Adam and no one else is called? Very simple. Because as I told you earlier, right, Adam is only there in singular. There's no plural for Adam. For Ish, there's Anashim. For Ishad, there's Nashim. For Tapoach, there's Tapochim. But there is no plural for Adam. And he says like this, we're in the world where you have one man is accused of killing a child and the entire Jewish people are put on trial as if they're all guilty. And their whole Torah is questioned. One man is guilty, but everyone is on trial. You know, uh, I think uh, this week Norman Lamb, who was the president of Yeshiva University, his wife passed away, unfortunately. But years ago he told a story how he was on a cruise in, uh, I think it was the year when in Tebby happened. I remember when it was the uh, 60. Seven or seventy, I don't even remember myself, I'm sorry, but he was on this cruise and there was a waiter, an Israeli waiter, his name was Mendel. And when the, the people on the cruise, which was mostly non-Jews, heard that Israel successfully went in Tebi and rescued all the Jews in one of the most brazen, miraculous, successful military victories, they got so excited, they grabbed this guy, Mendel, who was a waiter, and they put him on their shoulders, and they started dancing, celebrating Israel. And Rabbi, Rabbi Norman Lamb says, doesn't make sense. This guy's a waiter. What does he have to do with the military intelligence and the genius and the soldiers that risked their life that they're putting him on their shoulders just because he's... And the answer is, Atem Kuryum Adam. You see, we might be 14.7 million Jews in this world, but we're one organism. When people have hate, they direct it at all of us together. Here you have Mendel Bayless was being put on trial and the entire Jewish community's treating of humanity was being questioned. That's why it says, Atem Adam, you are called Adam and not the nations of the world. 
It was a long, arduous trial, and, and of course, miraculously, Menachem Be- Mendel, Bayless, Mendel Bayless was acquitted a few years later on he took and was able to, so to speak, go on with his life. But now going back to our portion. So the portion says, Adam, a, per- a person that has tsaras, mitzora. The rabbis tell us, why did someone get leprosy? The word mitzora is like an acronym of two words, motzi ra, when he speaks bad, gossip about another Jew. You might say to me, Rabbi, what's wrong with speaking a little gossip? It's fun to, to, to talk about someone else. Why, 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 do you, why bother? And what's the problem with having a little gossip? And that's why the Torah uses the word Adam. Adam! You know why you can't talk gossip? Because Adam, Kruim, Adam, you're one singular person. And what impacts one impacts the entire Jewish community. And the hate towards one is the hate towards everyone. So we have to be extra careful to watch the way we talk and not to hurt anyone with words that are painful. Adam, Kruim, Adam. Adam, Kiyem, a man, a person who is of one organism of the Jewish people should never use words that could hurt someone else. When I heard this story, it was, it was so powerful to me. And I think about it today. I think about what goes on in Israel. I think about the BDS movement. I think about the hate towards Israel, towards the Jewish people, and how irrational it is, and how it's directed at any Jew, no matter what. And I think about this power, Atem Kroyim Adam, the only word that has no plural for it. The Jewish people are one singular people. We are... We, we are connected and intertwined in every way if we like it or not. Through hate, through love. Let it be through love. Let it be through unity. Let it be through pride. Let it be through celebration. Let it be through talking positive about another Jew. Have a great day. Go on.